This video is going to be a look at Gus Edwards' impact in the Ravens' Week 8 win over the Cardinals, but more so, it's going to be a look at how unique his season has been. Uh, only registered a little over 400 yards, I think 440 last year in 2022. Dealt with injuries, coming back from the ACL injury in 2021. Uh, had to be difficult. This is a this is actually a very spectacular start for him in 2023. Even though he's got a career low in terms of yards per carry at 4.1, and those two statements don't really seem to fit. They seem to be diametrically opposed. Opposed. But at the halfway point of a 16 game schedule, this 28 year running back has 426 yards rushing, five touchdowns, over 100 yards receiving. Of course, he's got the 80 yarder against Detroit yesterday against the Cardinals. He had 80 rushing yards on 19 carries three touchdowns, two of which was the goal line variety where he's just he's always been an amazing weapon for this Ravens franchise. He's had a unique season, if you ask me, not just in short yardage situations. I'm going to get the film started early, and we're going to talk about a little bit of the things that, that he's done before week eight. Uh, most notably prior to Sunday was his impact on the Ravens basically game-closing possession against the Bengals, being used as a lead blocker, and then this conversion run to basically seal the win against the Bengals, unbalanced power behind Ricard, which we you'll see some film of that here in a minute against um, Arizona. Downhill, that attitude, that mentality, we've missed that. We really have. J.K. Dobbins, a fa fantastic running back, and we've had some other guys here in the last two or three years that are veteran fill-in players, but nobody brings this element that Gus offers in goal line situations, short yardage situations, and nobody else has an 80-yard catch on their resume. Of course, he, di he didn't get into the end zone, but it's a beautiful example of Lamar making plays that are off schedule, giving our offense, our, our position talent, opportunities to make plays that wouldn't have been there if Lamar Jackson wasn't playing a quarterback on that day. He's also been really effective in twin slot, a formation that I've talked about a little bit. I did a formation video before the game against the Cardinals. I, 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 twin slot is one that's interesting. The Ravens do it out of 11 personnel. This particular iteration is, is 20 personnel. If you call Ricard a fullback, some people have claimed he should be treated as a tight end. All I know is teams match up with their nickel and we're able to run the football out of this personnel grouping, whether it's 20, whether it's 11, and Gus Edwards and Pat Ricard on the field at the same time. I'd be interested in the yards per play when Gus is getting the football directly, whether it's a read option, whether it's an outside zone stretch concept like this one. Those two together bring a mentality that no two other players on our team bring offensively or defensively. Last one from prior to week eight. This is a wham trap play that we haven't seen in a while, I think since week four. It's basically a trap concept, leaving the defensive tackle unblocked. is perfectly suited for Gus Edwards and Pat Ricard because Gus gets downhill. We leave a D tackle unblocked. Ricard blocks down on him. Moses steps out to the, uh, the defensive end, which I think is Will Anderson. So you get this like cross block type of look to it. Allows Gus to get downhill, off tackle, get into the second level, untouched, which is just bad news for defenses when Gus Edwards is doing that. Look, he was... He was huge when we needed him because this offense was very disconnected yesterday against the Cardinals. I've been very critical of it, and I'll continue to be. So after watching the film a little bit here Monday night, it uh, comes out at 6 p.m. I'm less impressed than I even was on Sunday evening because of how long we waited to integrate the run game and Gus Edwards. When you look at the plays here in a moment, what he's able to do against this Arizona team, with running the football in the second half. Why did we wait so long to do it? Why did we have three consecutive punts to open the third quarter before we really just basically handed him the football and said, let's go? And I'll show you two possessions in a row where Gus Edwards gets the football four plays in a row both times. This is a ridiculous play by Lamar on the first possession. I think he should have got the ball to Mark Andrews here early, but in any case, Lamar scrambles out of there, flips it to Gus Edwards. Just one of really four unique plays I think Lamar made on that first possession. This one happened to involve Gus for a, a, a nine-yard gain. Mid-second quarter, this is going to be a, a counter run scheme where I think Lamar is just giving the football. Sometimes it's a read. Sometimes uh, I think it's just a give. 
And in this case, Andrews is stepping outside the D end. Lamar could do whatever he wants to do here, but it's a good read by him. I just don't, I didn't think watching it live that it looked like a read, but now Paul's in it here right at this exact instant. He's clearly looking at the outside linebacker. Ends up being a four yard gain for Gus. We read it, really didn't get Gus rolling. Um, he had a, he had a three yard gain on the play before that on a first and ten. We really didn't get him rolling. I thought Buda Baker did a great job of getting involved in the run game. You can see he's the unblocked player here that's able to get down there and stick Gus at his uh, quad level, hold him to a four yard gain. Later on in the second quarter, we get the interception by Stevens when we're tied at seven, and we set up this first and goal from the six. This is just downhill right now. The surge of Gus when he runs behind his pads. I'll let this one run one more time. So you can see a, his pad level, but you can see him running behind his pads. The lean that he's got here, especially on contact. Now it's granted it's contact with his offensive lineman. He almost surges into the end zone. We're about six inches short there. End zone angle, same play. Like I said, this is after the interception by Stevens where the score was still 7-7. Seven to seven. I know we ended up being 24-7, to seven, and there's people who are less pissed off about the, the fourth quarter than I am, but this is a situation where we go down and, and maybe we don't get a touchdown. We're only up 10-7 at the half. Gus Edwards brings this thumper mentality to finish off these runs. This is Gus Edwards. He's done this since he's with the Ravens in 2018. I think he's going to have a career year this year in rushing yards. All he needs is opportunities. I think his career high is like 783 or 743, something like that. He's got three career, three 700-yard seasons in his career. If he gets more opportunities, he's going to get more yards. I, th I think he could be looking at a 900-yard season. you got to unblock the end here, and this guy slips around Ricard. Two unblocked guys. The announcers, who I thought were pretty poor, did cover that quite well. That Gus Edwards is able to power in there for a short touchdown. Put us up 14-7 um, at the half after the first turnover by Josh Dobbs. Unfortunately for us, our offense went into um, hide mode during the third quarter, and thankfully we're able to get another interception. This one by Geno Stone. Scores 14-7 here. Very late in the third quarter. It's only a minute and 12 left, minute 15 left, and we go unbalanced. You can bet when you see us hurry up and line up quickly and snap the ball fast, we're probably in an unbalanced set so that the defense can't identify, so that the defense can't see it and make some adjustment. And here in this case, Arizona's made none. It's twins out here. They're not even lined up over the twins at all. Power. Pulling Simpson, I didn't think Simpson really got out of there with a whole lot of uh, tenacity or violence. But in any case, it's a nice cutback by Gus off this block by Stanley, who's the unbalanced uh, tackle, the second tackle over, if you will. Nice cut by Gus, six-yard gain. Go right back to him on the next play. Again, unbalanced. We've been doing this since week two against Cincinnati. And there's been, there was at least one week where we didn't succeed in the unbalanced short yardage stuff. Maybe it was the Colts, but I could be wrong. But you can see now we've taken Moses, moved him over. Andrews is the eligible tight end. You don't have to – the beautiful thing about the unbalanced stuff in the NFL is you don't have to report as eligible. I should, I should explain that. If you were going to have a tackle backside here and no one else – closing him off, no one else out there eligible, you'd have to report that tackle as eligible. Let's say this was Andrews and this was still Moses. You'd have to report Moses as eligible. It would still be an illegal formation in the NFL because you can't close off a guy for numbers. It's a stupid rule that they shouldn't use. They should force the defense to identify ineligible and eligible players as long as you don't let people do what Belichick and the Patriots did and put – a seventh eligible number out on the field. But in any case, it's a power concept out of unbalanced. Not a great job by Ricard, I don't think, on the kickout block. But Gus bounces it, gets into the end zone, just does what he does. Seven-yard touchdown run puts us up, I think, 21-7 at that point. Defense is able to go down and get a stop. Early fourth quarter, we get the football back, up 21-7. And here's what I'm talking about, that no one else brings this. Gus and Ricard on the field at the same time has been a pretty devastating duo at times. This is an outside zone concept. We're under center. I talked about this in a reaction video. People have said Lamar doesn't play good on outside zone stretch boot stuff. He doesn't play good with his back to the defense. I mean, that's just immature. Uh, Lamar's getting out of here, handing it off. Certainly look at – it's a great play call. 
Eight yards for Gus. Cool. But look at the space that's potentially created for Lamar off of play action. All you got to do for Lamar J Jackson is get him time and space, to, and he'll make plays, period. He does. This is a way to create more of those opportunities. I'm glad to see us going under center, getting Gus the football. It's a very predictable formation. It's trips closed, but that's another issue. We are probably 80% run to that side out of that formation, whether it's pistol, whether it's under center. In any case, second play in a row, Gus is going to get the football. Motion by Aguilar, it's 11 personnel. We've kept Aguilar, excuse me, we've kept Gus on the field, taken Ricard off, and then come right back and run the football on the second and two. I think it's a brilliant play call. Got to give Munkin credit. I'm just not sure why we went with seven consecutive passes to open the game and didn't recognize that this is what they're going to do. They're going to go to Lamar. The give is there to create opportunities against this, like, 5-1 look that the Cardinals like to use defensively. It was there on film. When I say 5-1, you've got an outside linebacker off screen to our right that we can't see. The only inside linebacker is White, and I think this is Starlin Thomas, I believe, who was – with the Lions in the preseason, less memory is incorrect. But look at what we've got. We're leaving this outside linebacker, Zayvon Collins, on block. Double team there, double team there. Front side block by Simpson. It's Kazair White and Gus Edwards, and Kazair White chooses wrong. Ends up being a seven-yard gain on the second and two. Go right back to it, but we swapped out the tight end and Ricard. Same exact play, except Gus is crossing Lamar's face a little bit more giving that defense putting that defensive end in more conflict meaning it's not it's not a downhill same side run he's kind of hedging to the opposite side before bringing it downhill and this is Zaven Collins once more who's forced Lamar to give it and Ricard can't uh, win on his block 93 folds inside to make the tackle it's a good read by Lamar not a good job blocking by Ricard 5 yards creates a second and 5 Bring Andrews back on the field. Ricard stays. So you can see that we're just subbing one guy on and off, but we're creating the same matchup under center trips. Ricard to the trip side, which is going to be the bottom side of our screen here. Same formation I talked about three plays ago on the eight-yard run. Trips closed, tight end backside. Trips here, that's 80% run. I'll have to confirm that for you guys so you know I'm not uh, just BSing it. Great job by Linderbaum. I think I give you the end zone angle here. Ten yard run by Gus on the cutback outside zone. Gus is meant to do this. He's he's meant to be a downhill runner in goal line situations too. But he's meant to do this as well. We do go back to the well a little bit too much later on in this video. Had to pull Gus off the field eventually. Can't give the ball to him every time. Sets up this third and eight. I do want to make this video a little bit longer because I want to make a point about Bateman. Probably do a short video on him at some point Tuesday. This is a cool play by Lamar and Bateman and Aguilar. It's double slants, and this is this is key. It's a third and eight. We got to get point points here. We don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Can Cucker make it when the ball's on the thirty-five? Of course he can, but he's already missed a thirty-five yarder. Getting an extra six yards here is key. It's double slants. Lamar's looking over here. He's got Aguilar. He's letting Bateman win to the inside, creating that space. Bateman isn't able to catch it and burst. It's maybe a little bit on the back hip. So Starlin Thomas is able to make the tackle for a six-yard gain, but we're able to get a field goal out of it, which I thought was key to go up 24-7. This video is going a little long, my apologies, but I want to show what Gus can do. You watched the game live yesterday, when I, but I want to focus on and illustrate it. Arizona goes down to score. Make it 31-15, I believe, and then 6-30 left. Again, we come back to Gus four times in a row. Outside zone, same formation I've talked about twice on the previous possession. Trips closed. Gus and Lamar both on the midline. That's run to the trip side. Six yards, one cut by Lamar. Excuse me, one cut by Gus. Potentially a hold on Macari there. I'm not sure why he's in the game at this point. Unbalanced set on a third and one. Power, Gus tries to bounce it. Simpson, I feel like, did a nice job here of adjusting during the play. He knows who he's got to go get. Simpson here, we're kind of stacked up to the play side. Simpson bounces it outside to get Kazire White. That was key. I mean, Gus is probably still going to get the first down, but I'm just impressed by Simpson. You can see us lining up quick. 
I missed a carry on the second down here, by the way. This was Gus's third carry in a row. His fourth carry in a row is how many plays it took the Cardinals to adjust and recognize anything. Trips closed. Lamar and Gus both on the midline. It's not pistol. It's under center. You know the play already because Iron White did too, finally, and gets a tackle for loss. We went to the well too, too often there. I do. I am really excited. I don't know about you to see. Look at the space that's created by Lamar being able to kick back here. It's going to put backside DNs in conflict. Yeah, there'll be guys that run right at Lamar. That'll just make a minus one more on the run concept. This creates a second and 13. Two plays later, this is the best call from yesterday's game, if you ask me. This is second and 13 sweep to Bateman. There is no identification from the Cardinals defense. Why? Because we've never run the sweep to Bateman. We're using Gus as the lead guy in the sweep, just like I showed you the play for Duve, which I thought was, was the reason why I mentioned it to you guys. My only problem with this play is that we're bringing Ricard over here. I would like this to be someone else so we play go against that, that tendency. Now, Ricard's actually not going with the sweep here. Ricard's blocking down. Why? To bring this guy with him. I'm going to pull this back so you can see the key. It's called a key breaker. Ricard is going down. Gus is leading. Basically, QB power read is what we've got here, guys. Give to Bateman. I'm just glad that we utilized him. 18-yard run, 15-yard gain, 15-yard penalty tacked onto it. I'm not talking about Bateman and Ricard and some of the stuff in the video. Well, it's all related. This is this is the two possessions where I feel like complementary plays were used along with each other. Now it's, now, it's run plays. It's all run plays, so that's not sexy for some people. But that's an 18-yard gain on a second and 13. Trips closed. Counter read by Lamar. Keep. Out the front door for 13. It's the same formation, guys. Arizona did a really poor job of identifying this stuff. There's no one here. I, pre snap, there's no one identifying anything that you've got trips closed. Lamar and the running back both on the midline. Absolutely zero awareness by Arizona's defense. And good for Todd Munkin that we finally took advantage of some of the stuff in the run game. I thought we could have run, to me, watching their run defense in the third and fourth quarter, this is a team we could have run for 150, 170 against. As it stands, Gus ends up with 80 yards on 19 carries and three touchdowns, so it doesn't end up being a, <clears throat> a dominant day statistically for him from a 60-minute perspective. But when we finally decided and recognized that we were going to give him the football in these situations, Arizona had a heck of a time trying to stop him, and they certainly couldn't keep him out of the end zone. I thought it gave our guys up front a chance to attack, and in my opinion, it sets up Lamar for better opportunities in the future on some of that outside zone stretch stuff. We've got to run that stuff, and we've got to run that stuff soon because there's enough film of us right now running the outside zone with Gus to Ricard's side. Ricard does a good job over there. Now we've got to set people up for the play action stuff to our, our other athletes that are on the field or even the tight end backside. Man, you guys let me know what you think of the video. It certainly went, A, a little longer than an individual uh, film study video should, number one. And number two, I delved into some other stuff, the lack of commitment to the run game early um, and my criticisms of that, which you guys have heard probably twice already. Additionally, the uh, utilization of Bateman on the sweep I thought was the call of the game. And it helps illustrate, for for me at least, helps illustrate how if we are less predictable with who we're getting the ball to, it actually makes us a better and more dangerous offense overall. I thought Gus Edwards was the closer in Sunday night's game, and I thought we needed each and every yard that he gave us to build a lead up and then you know hold on at the end after giving up two touchdowns to Arizona's offense. Let me know what you guys think of the video in the comments section if you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this film study look at Gus Edwards' contribution in Sunday's Week set, week 8 win over the Cardinals, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.